In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use grayscale to color your digital art. So make sure you stick around and watch the video till the end. So if this is your first time stumbling across my channel or my videos, I'm Mohamed Agbadi. I make digital art tutorials and I also cover other artists and try to learn from them using their own techniques, seeing how we can apply what they know into our own images. So if you're into that kind of thing, smash the subscribe button and click the notification icon so you'll be notified whenever I upload new content on YouTube. So today's video is sponsored by today's video is sponsored by the professor. Yeah, so if you have any questions for the professor, just leave them down in the comments down below. All right. So this is the final image that uh I had this is the final image I created from using this technique for uh don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you how I made this image from a grayscale uh, approach. So let's just take that off. Now, this is the line art I had for the image. Now, you can see it's just a really clean uh, line art. And I just selected the entire thing and filled it with gray underneath. And to show you everything I'm doing, I have this small box right here. That's what I'm going to use to show you how to do this in your own images. So first off, what I started with was choosing a light direction. Now, this, the gray, the gray layer is on a normal layer. And then I created another layer above it and clipped it onto this gray layer. Now, this layer I clipped, I'm filling it with white. As you can see, this is just pure white. And then I'm filling it at 100% and I'm using a top-down light source. So let's do the same thing for our little box down here. So I created, created a new layer and I'm clipping it on the box and then I'm just going to pretty much brush in the same white light source that's coming in from the top as, as I had with the girl. I'm going to do the same thing with the box right here. So we'll just figure out the edges of the box and nail those out and bam we fill that with white so for this video i'm not going to use any uh really fancy uh lighting setup maybe i have a light coming from below i'm not going to do that i'm just going to use a very simple top down lighting setup because that's the easiest to really achieve if you're trying to understand how light works it's very easy to understand that by just using a simple top-down lighting setup like this so next i created was the ambient occlusions now ambient occlusions are the areas where uh you have your surfaces touching and light cannot reach those areas now i know for some people that understand 3d they might have a different uh understanding of what these ambient occlusions are but this is how I understand ambient occlusions coming from kind of a painting perspective and um, learning this from the color and light book by James Gurney. Now, you can always check that book out, uh, the links in the description below if you want to understand how color and light works. That book really helped me a lot. So that's exactly what I'm doing. All the areas where uh, I had objects touching like our shoes, these shoes here. I just fill them in with just a little bit of gray. Now I'm not using black. I'm just using gray for that because I don't want the uh, contrast of the, I don't want the contrast of the image to be pretty high at this stage. I want to keep everything neutral so I can control how dark everything goes later on in the image. So you can see I'm doing the same thing right here where her, her hair is touching her forehead right here in the face, in the mask, around her neck, underneath the, uh, underneath the breasts and this side, her guns as well. And then we, that's what it looks like. Let me take it off. Let me put it back. That's what it looks like. So let's do the same thing on the box. Now for the box, because we know that uh, it's really not touching a lot of objects right now, but we know it's touching the floor. So that's where we're going to put our ambient occlusions. We're just going to brush them in gradually around the corners of the box because the box is touching the ground and right there where it's touching the ground, light will not be able to uh, reach it around these areas. Although we can have some bounce light coming back up to hit the box from the ground but generally this is where we're going to have our ambient occlusions 
And then next thing I did was I took off the line art just to see how this looks now. I'm just going to put it back on. And now that I've put it back on, you can see how everything is beginning to read. The forms are generally reading. Now, if you don't understand your forms, I would suggest you should do some studies or figure drawing so you can know how what parts of the shape you would want to curve out and blur as you can see i blurred out some parts of the shape now you, that's pretty easy you can just do it by using this smudge tool and that's this and you can just set it you can choose any different brush you want to use it on and then you just go to the edge you want to blow and just uh, smudge it a little bit so let's just let's think that this place is sloppy so let's just smudge this part a bit and then we'll leave this part just for this tutorial all right so next i did was i started on doing the colors of the character so i started flattening out her colors and that's this so you can see that the flat colors are just on a normal layer although i have this color hold right here which is white so this is on a normal layer it's just a really rough uh pretty rough uh flat colors just to get everything that her character uh is made up of and then i turned the grayscale layer to multiply now this is very 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 easy as you can see why i did that above is because if you put this if you group everything together in one group and put it on multiply it affects everything that's below it so if i had this color above this layer i'll have to be setting the color on multiply and that will really mess things up it will mess the entire layer setup so you really have to think about the way you're stacking your layers up against each other and that's what you have to do with this technique so you really need to put this layer above your flat layers so let's do the same thing here right now so this is our box let's shut off all these other layers this is our box right here let me rename this to box box all right so this is our box and then i'm going to group everything together i selected all the layers and then command j command g actually to group them into one so this is our entire box and then we're going to set this on multiply as you can see it's just it has turned the entire layer transparent so i'm going to create another group below it and another layer and then i'm going to fill that layer with white now you can see this layer is normal and our box right here the shades are showing through it so i'm going to paint in uh some colors onto the box layer here so we can see how that works let's just play around we're not really doing anything superficial here we're not trying to be yeah so let's just paint in some color here and you can see how this works because i have this set to multiply now if i had this set to normal nothing is going to happen but once you put it to multiply it goes through it turns transparent and everything you've done above is going to show beneath you can see the ambient occlusions are showing and everything so let's just play around you can still use the multiply layer to add a bunch of different colors onto your box maybe play around with it and um just add a ton of other colors if that's what you want to do so now this is the really fun part where you can really really have fun with this technique this is the really fun part so let's go back here now remember this white we used right here let's turn it back to normal so we can see the grayscale remember this first light source we had right here now we're going to change the entire light source so let's imagine this light source is actually a blue light source let's set it back to multiply so what you want to do is use command or control on windows click on the layer where you have your key light and then go back into your colors create a new layer pin it above and then 
you can set this layer to overlay and you can paint in the color you want your light source to be and it will just affect all the colors that are beneath it so you can see how i just use a blue color to change the color the light source to blue and if we go to uh hue and saturation you can draw drag this up by using command u or control u we can actually toy around and change the color of this particular light source so you can see i'm changing it to yellow blue purple i want to change it to red you can increase the saturation make it a little bit darker if you want and remember this is going to work with whatever color is below it so it's just like you're actually playing around with 3d because you have it on an overlay layer so if this is if this is actually red but because the color beneath the layer is yellow it's not changing it to red entirely so if you wanted to do that you're going to have to paint it in directly yourself so let's go back and just use the blues now since we've uh changed our light source to blue we're going to have to change our shadows to orange because orange is the uh contrasting color to blue and if you have a blue light source and the object is in an orange environment or the ambient light is orange the shadows are going to be orange so we select the entire image and then deselect our light source and then we go back and create another layer and set this one on multiply and then this is where you choose your colors for the shadows you never want to come down here you always want to keep your colors right here and then you select this oh i'm using blue let me take it back to orange and then you go here select this and you fill that bam now you can see exactly how this is looking we have our blue light source and our warm shadows we can always change the color of the shadows if you are if you are not comfortable with how it's looking you can always change the color of your shadows that's what i really love about this technique after this the next thing i'll do is literally just paint in uh our bounce lights and i usually like doing that on a layer above everything so after i've done all my initial uh lighting i'll now go up select the areas that i want to kind of have my bounce lights in and then i start painting them gradually so because i have a blue light source hitting the character i know that this blue light is going to spill on the background and bounce back into the shadows so i'm going to let's say the let's say the ground is just a transparent light source so we're just going to use blue and just paint that in gradually back into the shadows you really want to go as mild as you can as possible you don't want to pretty much overdo it another thing you might want to do is maybe just use a screen layer or a linear dodge layer to just bump up this light right here to make it really look like it's intense and it's really glowing i love doing that a lot in my work if anyone follows me on instagram you know i always do that a lot and i'll just use blue here and just paint that in around where the light source is hitting just to pretty much show you how intense this light source is So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this technique and I suggest everyone should try this out in their spare time. Uh, let's even make it a challenge. Let's make it a challenge. So do this technique and tag me. Use this technique and tag me on Instagram with your images. And also you can just leave a comment down below if you're interested, what you think about the technique. Just leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. And then you go up, you go back, uh make your own image use the same technique you don't have to go all crazy and use a bunch of colors just try you just start using a few colors maybe use complementary colors blues greens uh, uh maybe you could use some harmonious colors uh you could use some contrastive colors just do just do this technique it's very very easy so let's see how you can apply what you've learned in this video and yeah 
I hope you enjoyed this episode that was brought to you from the professor. So, leave a thumbs up on the video if you did. Uh, I'm hoping to go for a thousand likes on this video. So, let's see what you guys got. Let's go. And um, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done that. I will see you guys in the next video. I'm going now. Don't worry. I'm not doing anything. I'm not. I'm not being awkward today. Bye.